Good morning. Today's video is my response to the video I watched this morning, which was Richard Wolff's economic update. This one in particular, reparations and forgiving uh, student debts, which he talks about in there, because this is not anything about actually reparations or student debt. He talks about Uber and how Uber's CEO makes a ton of money, and of course the workers don't. His solution for the economy is to create an economy for the U.S. that is all worker cooperatives. I believe changing the law, because I can't see it happening any other way, where every workplace has to be a democratic worker cooperative. Um, I've done videos before on why that's not a feasible solution. It takes way too much to implement it, as well as even when it's implemented, they're still competing against each other, so it's not actually efficient. In, and I'm going to showcase that with the Uber example. So um, let's say after a lot of toil and labor, we get those laws passed and, or you, because I'm not American, you get those laws passed and now the people who work for Uber and Lyft own Uber and Lyft. They now are still in competition with each other. So they decide in their workplace that they want to make $25 an hour, so they each make $25 an hour. They were working for $12 an hour under the old system in Uber and Lyft. So they slowly, though, vote their way down to $12 an hour because they were willing to work for $12 an hour. And the consumer was willing. Uh, they're still in competition with each other. And if one of them is willing to work for $24.50 and the other one's $24, $35.50, $30, $3.50, they eventually get down to the point where like, oh, this is the lowest we can go where we're still able to pay for ourselves because they're in competition with each other. So you'd have to also pass a... Um, clause in the, they were like there's one car driving company and then they set the rate and then consumers choose to use them or not they also under that system would never vote to automatize the vehicles autonomous vehicles would take away from their jobs so they wouldn't want that they're going to vote to to maintain their work we're in a new world where most things can be automated as well as with globalization um they the workplace cooperative would have been a great solution in the 70s and 80s. It's no longer a great solution. Although if there is a worker cooperative user in Lyft, I will use it in my city. I agree more with using that and supporting paying them a living wage because the truth is they could absolutely compete with Lyft and, and Uber if we knew what a worker cooperative was and wanted to give them our values because they would vote to, to pay $25 an hour. We, were, we, the user, were already paying $25 an hour, but instead of 50% uh, of that or 30% of that going to, to Uber and they still have to maintain their vehicle and so they end up getting only $12 an hour, we would vote that the vast majority goes directly to the, to the driver so that we can use a system that is more equitable. But that is why a consumer cooperative is the answer for basically everything because a consumer cooperative, overnight, we don't need to wait to change the laws. We can just come together in a city that is that allows Uber and Lyft already. Vancouver's not that city. Um, and get 10,000 people together who use it and say, okay, well, let's not have that money go to shareholders. Let's create our own platform because Uber doesn't own cars. They don't have driver employees. They're only contractors. They don't actually own anything proprietary we can recreate a platform that meets our needs, that is as a female, has a female driver if I want, that in, during surge pricing is gonna keep more drivers on the, on the road so we can get home, as well as, hey, I'm going home from this concert, I'm going to this location in my neighborhood, are there other drivers, that all, oh, sorry, other riders that also wanna come so that I can pay less and the driver themselves can still make a beyond living wage, especially if going during surge pricing. We can create solutions. That, okay, so so where is all that money going for the worker? It's go a lot of it's going to car maintenance. Well, can we bulk buy fuel? fuel? I don't know. Can we can we have a car mechanic? That can we have uh, vehicles that are loaned out? Can we have like what system can we create that actually solves all of the problems? So more money is going to the labor and the worker, and we the user would absolutely vote to have autonomous vehicles because that would solve a lot of our problems. And when we create an economy where automation doesn't mean starvation, where everyone's needs are met, then we want to automate because it means there's less human labor involved and more time to enjoy everything in life. And we don't need users on the road. We don't need a piecemeal economy. But as long as we have a piecemeal economy, we might as well own it together 
and use it together and recreate it with the user base in mind. Please like and subscribe. See you tomorrow.